I'm Steve Lockard, Superintendent for Carroll County Public Schools, and this is Report Card on Education. I'm happy to be at Westminster High School today, and I'm joined by Laura Dolan, who's our Coordinator of Secondary English Language Arts, as well as Jordan Costley. Jordan is a senior here at Westminster High School. Thank you both for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. So today we're going to talk a little bit about an upcoming event which I had the great pleasure of attending last year, and that is the African-American Read-In. Now, I know that the National African-American Read-In is the nation's first and oldest event dedicated to diversity in literature. And like I said, I attended last year's local event and was so impressed by our students and just the entire event. What a great opportunity for our students to celebrate, share, and explore African-American literature poetry, art, and culture. And I know it takes a lot of work and a lot of collaboration with our partners to make it happen. So today we're going to talk to Laura and Jordan a little bit about that event and what's involved. So we'll start with Laura first. Laura, tell us a little bit of the information about Carroll County Public Schools African American Read-In. Well, thank you. The African American Read-In this year is being held Monday, February 3rd, from 7 o'clock to approximately 8.30 at Carroll Arts again. We do have a snow date of Monday, February 24th, the same time and place. Have had to use that date a few years. Um, The event is free of charge, and no ticket is required. So we welcome all. There's no need to RSVP. Folks can just show up that evening. We will have all eight of our Carroll County Public Schools high schools participating, as well as Silver Oak Academy. Our intended audience is really primarily for adults and teenagers, just simply due to the fact of the students are doing the readings and the complexity and maturity of the literature and the texts performed are probably over the heads a little bit of some elementary students. So we recommend for older, teenage, and beyond. It is available to us as an event with a great amount of support from the Carroll County Public Library in particular, Carroll Arts Center, and the Carroll chapter of the NAACP. And then we work with each of the high schools through their National English Honor Society and their minority student unions to help support the event, advertise the event, and work to solicit students to volunteer to participate in the read-in by performing and reading our t- the text of their choice. The English department chairs at each high school really help to encourage and recruit those students. Each high school student will read or perform a text written or composed by an African-American writer or artist, and in some cases that artist is the actual student himself or herself. And those are some of our favorites when the students share their original work. So we hope folks will come and join us. That's fantastic. Like I said, I had the uh, fortune to attend last year and was just so impressed with our students and their presentation in that event. So let's talk a little bit about the history. How did it come about? I did note the National African American Read-In, but let's talk about how that has evolved here in Carroll County. There are events across the nation to support and celebrate Black History Month. This was originally established in 1990 by the Black Caucus of the National Council of Teachers of English to make literacy a significant part of Black History Month. Since then, the initiative has reached more than 6 million participants around the world in those 30 years since then. So if you go to the National Council of Teachers of English, the NCTE.org website, you can see a list of events across the state of Maryland, but also across the United States and even in countries abroad. Ours should be listed there as well. And this year marks our sixth annual event here in Carroll County Public Schools. Well, that's fantastic. And I know we introduced Jordan earlier. She's a senior here at Westminster High School. This is her fourth year participating in the read-in. And Jordan is quite an accomplished student with many (laughs) accolades and an involvement across our, our school community. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your participation in the read-in, Jordan? What's your favorite part of the read-in each year? So my favorite part of the read-in is definitely seeing all of the schools in Carroll County come together. Unity is so important when it comes to our schools, and this gathering is one of the many opportunities for students of different backgrounds and schools to come together and be on one accord. And having the community be a part of it, I mean, it is so amazing to have people from all over the county to come just to see us perform and it's so amazing and you get on that stage and you feel that you feel the feeling in your throat where you're like oh my gosh can I do this and you're just so excited for them to hear the words uh, that you're expressing and it's such an 
amazing opportunity that I've been so thankful to be a part of for the past four years. Well, I would completely agree with you. Like I said, being in the audience last year, uh, I was incredibly well attended and our students did such a fantastic job. Jordan, what do you think are any misconceptions about the African American read-in that you'd like to provide some information on or clarify? So the misconception to me that I would love to clear up is who can participate. So a lot of people think that they have to be African American to read at the African American read-in, and that is not true. Anyone can participate. The only thing that you need to be able to do is read. That's what I always tell people when I'm advertising about the African American reading is, if you can read, if you can stand on the stage, if you can stand still and read, then you can be in the African American reading. It does not take that much. So I would love for that misconception to be cleared up because I think there are so many talented students who don't know it yet and even reading a small poem might change their life in a way that they didn't even know it. So I would love for that misconception to be cleared up because I've been so fortunate to be a part of this program and that's one thing that I'm so sad to see go as I graduate because it's it's been a part of me since I've been here as a freshman. So I hope that people learn to understand that it's not just African Americans reading African American poems. It's everybody reading African-American poems or reading a song or singing a song. So. Right. Well, I appreciate your clarification there, and I think you did a good job of letting everybody know. We've talked about this. You've been involved for four years. Uh, Laura shared that the program has existed here in Carroll County for six years. So what do you hope to see for the future of the African-American read-in? So I would love to see the program grow due to some of the misconception that we get of who can read. I think that's why some people are so hesitant to read at these events because they don't think that they can. So I think that it will clear up the issue. And uh, Ms. Doolin and I talked about that maybe something we could do to make the program grow is all of the schools have their own event where it's anyone who goes to the school and incorporating the International Thespian Society and all of those societies or anyone in the school can participate. So then you get people who are closer to your school to come and participate in reading. And then you send three or four to the local one and then you have people read from there. So then it's a different opportunity, a different background, different people. So then they just get a feel of it and then we're growing the program as a whole instead of just having it for one day, it's an entire celebration, which is what we like to conceive in that one night. I think that's what I would like to see as I go off to college and coming back and seeing that growth would be something that's truly amazing. Absolutely, that's a great vision for the future for sure. Now, having had been a part of the read-in for the last four years, you've had the opportunity to see your fellow uh, students participate. What do you believe to be the significance of the read-in, not just for you, but also for your fellow classmates? So the significance to me is there are so many outlooks to the read-in, and that's why I rave forever about how much this program means to me. I've connected with so many people outside of my school from just this reading, and since I do plays, sometimes they're really nervous, and I'll say like, hey, I, I, I can tell that this is your first performance. You see that clock straight ahead? If you look at that, you can't see anyone, and it'll help you get through it. So just being able to connect with other people that I might have never met from this if I didn't do this event is something that I'm very fortunate. And as a performer, performing every year has helped me grow and see different outlooks and how a poem really makes me feel and I think poetry is such an amazing thing and really helps you and I think a lot of the opportunities I've had in this community is due to being in this program a lot of people approach me like oh my gosh that was so amazing I, I'd love for you to do something at my church or come to my school and talk and and not only thank God but I thank the program because if I hadn't gone, if I hadn't performed, then I don't think that I would have had those opportunities. And as an African American, being able to pay tribute to people who have either passed away or people who are still living and the art that they've created and being able to pursue that and show that their work is still appreciated is something that I think is a lifetime experience.
Absolutely. Celebrating our diversity, networking with your fellow students, as you mentioned, and also a great opportunity for student voice. That's so important to us as a school system. We're here for our students. And so giving the opportunity for our students to participate in an event like this, uh, as you so eloquently described, uh, is fantastic. Can you give us an idea of some of the literature we can expect at this year's read-in? Yes. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what I've done for the past four years. So I always try to make it my mission to myself to go to the next level. Like, what can I do to push the limits? So my freshman year, that was the only year that we didn't have it all together. We all did it individually at the schools. I did Lord, Why Did You Make Me Black by Renute Nia Evo, which is a beautiful poem, and it talks about feeling as, why did God make me black? Like, I'm the color of soil, like all things that are dirty. But later in the poem, the artist comes into realization that there was a reason that he made you black. And it's a very, it's a very beautiful poem, and it, it teaches you something, and I think a lot of poetry teaches you something. My sophomore year, I tap dance, and I did famous quotes by Muhammad Ali, which was super fun, super stressful. I forgot everything the minute I got on stage and I was freaked out. Somehow I pulled it off. How? I still don't know. <laughs> and my junior year, I read Sojourner Truth's poem, Ain't I a Woman, which is super fun because she I feel like she was a super sassy person and I'm a super sassy person and so. I remember that from last year <laughs> and I kind of like dressed like how I thought that she would have dressed and so that was really fun and then this year I'm most likely going to do a piece from The Color Purple which is such an amazing show and, and I could rave about it so that's what I'm doing and I know over years past people do poems from all over the place and sing songs that they love and it's such just an awesome opportunity to even participate so that's one thing I noticed last year such a wide variety in the presentation so I'm really looking forward to what you have in store for us this year Laura did you want to add anything to that sure our school's English departments are still finalizing their titles for this year as Jordan said most likely she's doing the color purple <laughs> in years past we've had a variety of African-American literature from a variety of time periods and diverse genres so anything from Maya Angelou, Langston Hughes, and Rita Dove tend to be among the favorites. But we've had everything. One year we had a symphonic performance of Songs of Slavery with narration over top. Contemporary poetry and poetry of the Harlem Renaissance in a wide variety. Excerpts from prose essays. Dramatic performances of play scenes. Recitations of rap lyrics. Step and dance group accompaniment to oh, some I of our step. poetry. <gasps> And my favorite part of the evening is when our students read or perform their own creative original work. And I anticipate we'll have several of those again this year. I'm excited about what they will do this year. Every year, as you have said, it's such an impressive evening. And I'm more and more impressed with the amazingly talented and diverse student body we have in Carroll County Public Schools. Absolutely. So if someone would like more information about the African-American read-in, whom should they contact? Uh, the best thing to do would be to contact me, Laura Doolin, at Central Office. My extension is 410-751-3057. They could also contact the English Department Chair at the local high school, who will have all of the information. And then we are looking forward to this amazing event. We welcome all who may be interested. Our hope is people will come and fall in love with diverse literature. And they can visit our school media centers and local library branches for more texts after they fall in love with that literature. Well, we're very excited for this year's African American Read-In. I want to thank you both for joining us today, giving us some insights and building a little bit of excitement um, as it's fast approaching. Um, and we're all looking forward to that. Once again, my guests today have been Laura Doolin, Coordinator of Secondary English Language Arts in Carroll County Public Schools and Jordan Costley, a senior here at Westminster High School. We look forward to seeing you at the African American Read-In. Once again, I'm Steve Lockard, and this has been Report Card on Education.